Welcome to another program, Perspectives El Paso. I'm Professor Leon Blevins, Professor of Government at El Paso Community College. My wife is Shanna Blevins, and for years she taught in the uh, El Paso Independent School District with deaf children. And then when she retired, she went to work at Jesus Chapel School, at which we had volunteered over a number of years. We met a lovely couple at Jesus Chapel named Jesus and Maria Ruiz. <laughs> And Maria, you were a volunteer, weren't you, at Jesus Chapel? You weren't employed on staff with, um, you were just a volunteer? Uh, yes, I, I volunteered um, the whole year last year, you know, um, and it was from, you know, in all day. You okay. know, I was there since, uh, since the morning from 8 to uh, 3.30, 4, 4 o'clock. So that's who I have with me on the show today. I have Jesus and Maria Ruiz. Now, Maria has something very special about her because just recently she was named by CNN Television News as one of the 10 finalists for what they had selected as Hero of the Year. And I believe they had uh, nominations of over 4,000 people for this, and it was narrowed down to 10, and then eventually to one. And so that's the reason I've invited Maria here as one of CNN's heroes. And I, I agree with the definition of uh, the moderator at that, the particular event in which you received this wonderful award, hero <laughs> of CNN, that a hero is someone who is just an ordinary person who is recognized for doing something extraordinary. extraordinary. Now tell us what it is that you were certified as doing extraordinary here in El Paso, Texas. Um, well, um, the story begins um, in, back in 1996, okay. and um, what we, um, we started doing it back in 1996, we started uh, taking uh, food across, and we were feeding 1,200 kids a day on a daily basis for three and a half years. Oh, my word. <laughs> and that's when I remember you began to talk to us. It wasn't just about food. You asked a number of us if we could donate clothing for some of the people over there, adults and children. And uh -huh. So what some people think of as junk is treasure to other people. Oh, and yeah. so this is when we became acquainted with your particular <laughs> program. And, and Jesus, I understand that you helped put in a little seed money to help her get this thing started. Is that right? How did you help her financially? Uh, well, while she started uh, the, the first time that uh, she had to invest some money, uh -huh. um, she just got one of our paychecks, or, and uh, that's how she got all this started. That, that was the very first time that uh, she did something for that community there in Juarez, mm -hmm. and uh, she used my, my whole paycheck. She came to me and says, Jesus, <laughs> uh, this is what happened, this is the experience I got, and uh, what do you think? And I, and I asked her, what do you want to do? She said, well, I would like to take him some food and everything. I said, well, babe, I mean, I just got paid. So go ahead and use the, the check. I mean, one check is not going to hurt us. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, well I, uh, you were honored by the, the city of El Paso recently. I believe it was November the 19th as Maria Ruiz Day. And down at City Hall, they recognized you for this. Uh, and uh, if I remember reading the article, it mentions that uh, you had... Uh, attended a funeral in Juarez, yes. and because of the poverty you saw when you went to that particular funeral, what, 1996? Yes. That's why you talked to Jesus about doing something special for the poor people in Juarez. Tell us about this. It touched your heart. Uh -huh. Well, um, in 1996, when I, uh, you know, I actually went to my grandmother's fun funeral, okay. and uh, then my, um, one of my aunts got sick, and um, we had to take her home. And um, they had told us that she had moved to a faraway place, but you know she had always been well off. And um, when we took this particular aunt ho uh, home, we got there, and uh, you know it, it took it took us a long time to get there. First of all, and when we just when we got got there, there was unpaved roads. There was, you know. The situation that they were living in is like true poverty. Yes, very much so. Um, there was um, the houses were made out of pallets and cardboard, mm -hmm. and um, there were just like shacks, and there was no floors, there was no water, there was no electricity, um, there was no sewer, of course, you know, mm -hmm. and um, no gas. Um, they didn't have any air conditioners, no heaters, and it was really, really, really extreme poverty. And when I saw that, you know, it just touched my heart. And then I told my aunt, uh, and I asked her, aunt, you know, why didn't you say something? You know, and she says, Mija, don't <coughs> worry about, don't worry about us. If you want to help somebody, go to the school, go visit the school. Oh my. And that's when it all started. <laughs> okay. When when I went to visit the school, and I saw the school. 
And there again, you know, the school was just something else, you know, it, no, no floors, no water, no electricity, no bathrooms. Um, the kids were fainting uh, because it was, you know, extreme heat and uh, it, it, was, it was just a really, really, really poor situation. And you thought you could make a difference. I noticed when you were on the international program of CNN, mm -hmm. uh, that would be Thanksgiving Day, you went to Hollywood, California mm -hmm. for that presentation. Yeah, totally true. And I remember when you were speaking and my wife and I were watching you, there were tears coming down our cheeks. And we noticed they were showing people in the audience that were tears coming down their cheeks when you were talking about this poverty and what you could make a difference on. And I remember this phrase especially. You said something like, if each one of us will do just our little part, it will add up to something big and we can really make a difference. Yes. And you have seen this over the years. Now, I don't think you're feeding 1,200 at, currently at a time, are you? Because you also no. mentioned that some of the funds had been depleted, businesses were not helping you anymore. Tell us about now what's happening. You're feeding about how many a, a week or a day or whatever? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what we're doing is we're collecting items, you know, throughout the week and then, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, we take them across the border and then on the weekends, like on Saturday, then we distribute, you know, whatever we have available is what we distribute. Um, uh, we're feeding uh, some, you know, maybe about 300. 300, 400 children, you know, it's not as, as much as 1,200 kids a day, you know, it's more on a, uh, a weekly basis, right. but um, also besides that, you know, we're, we're, we're building and we're building, you know, the building that we're building is, um, is, is going to be a cafeteria to feed 500 children at a time, oh uh -huh. and then uh, the orphanage will be able to house 100 children at a time. And we're also building a vocational training center, you know, to teach them a trade, to teach them uh, some skills, um, to teach them, um, you know, so that they can be, have a better quality of life. So they can be self-sufficient uh -huh. with themselves, right? Yes. Now, I understand, Jesus, this developed also, this is out of a Christian ministry. You have a heart of love out of your Christian beliefs, correct? Yes. And don't you pastor now a, a church over there, or you minister them through s preaching and, and services? Yes, uh, you know, um, we never planned to uh, uh, plant a church there. Mm -hmm. But as we, we, we gather to pray for the land and pray for the, the you know, the, the vision that uh, we, we were envisioning at that point, right. uh, people started gathering and says, can we join you in prayer? And say, well, of course, you can join us. And from there, I mean, it started, you know, uh, uh, cool. just uh, arising at church, you can say, uh, and uh, people started gathering every week, and, you know, every time we they saw us praying, they all go over, and, you know, I just shared the gospel with them. Right. And uh, that's how the church part got started. I noticed that others that received awards as heroes, now you did not get the number one prize, that went to a woman who's helping rebuild homes uh, along the Gulf Coast from Hurricane Katrina right. ravaging. <clears throat> I noticed a spiritual dimension with these others also. Didn't you see that with the ones that you met in Hollywood? There was something about their religious beliefs and their love that came out of it. Even if they weren't Christians, it was a different religious belief. Didn't you see that? Yeah, yes, they, they all had, um, you know, faith in them, you know, some kind of faith. And they were all wonderful people. They, when we, we got to meet all of them, mm -hmm. you know, and we got to share and, you know, just fellowship with them. It was really an awesome experience. Right. Yeah. Well, I sense that just from them <laughs> telling their stories about orphanages, uh, about um, caring for children who had AIDS, yeah. uh, about uh, prosthetic um, uh, uh, limbs and things yeah. like that, a gentleman that's doing those in Mexico, and it was a thrilling experience just to watch that television special. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Yeah. All of them, all of them were um, stories that were, you know, that were help, you know, that, you know, that help somebody right. and, you know, that impact somebody else's lives, you know, and it's not just one person, you know, they impact, you know, the community as a whole or, right. you know, many different, you know, uh, lives that they impact, but they were, they all work hard and they all have beautiful stories. Right. I think it's interesting that here we are right between Thanksgiving Day of 2008 and Christmas Day of 2008 doing this particular program. <laughs> and that's what it is about, being thankful about what we have and then understanding that the real spirit of Christmas is not getting, but it is giving. Okay. Now, I noticed that uh, you uh, handed me a business card that says Jim Ministries, J-E-M, and we want you to give you the opportunity to put your telephone number or website on the screen when this is shown. So if anyone wants to help you in this, they'll be able to contact you. You want to do that? 
Which yes. one of you want to give us your number? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, well, oh, it'll be me then. It, it's uh, f uh, the number is uh, five nine three seven six one two, mm -hmm. and five nine three seven six one two, and the website is uh, J E M M I N I S T R I E S E P dot O R G. It's Gem Ministries E P dot O R G. Good. Well, we want the public know. Maybe you'll get some contacts and people will say, I want to also share through your vision. How are you going to start using the money that they contributed? What are you going to do with the first part of it? Well, hey, Sus. Um, <laughs> uh, I want to speak for her. Okay. We have planned uh, putting some concrete uh, in the orphanage. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, giving it a second thought, we're going to focus inside or in the interior so we can get, a, uh, get them done to the point so we can start operating. Because uh, uh, when she started feeding the children, she, it was uh, 1,200 children mm -hmm. at a time in the school. Mm -hmm. And uh, by having this community kitchen operating, we're not going to feed only 1,200 children that they're in the school. We're going to feed every single children that they're in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. which is over uh, 2,000, 2,500 children. Mm -hmm. That's approximately. Okay. So by doing that, um, I'm, we, we talk about it, and that's the right. first thing we, we're going to be doing. Right. Continue. So you're going to start working from the inside out, but you're going to have a covering on you so you don't get rained out or right. something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, well, tell us about going back and forth across the bridge. Uh, this is a big part of the difficulty, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, going across the, bo uh, the border is not a, an easy task. Um, you know, just because of the lines when you come back, mm -hmm. you know, when you go across, you know, it takes us about 30 to 45 minutes, you know, about 45 minutes to get there. But then, you know, when we come back, the lines are long and that's what makes it, you know, if we're taking a trip during the week, you know, we can wait anywhere uh, from an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, two hours and a half. You know, it just depends what, what um, um, you know, how long the line is, you know, but the, the lines are long. Right. <laughs> Now, I know you cannot do this ministry alone. Right. It's too big of a job for just the two of you. And, of course, the Lord helps you and gives you the strength to do this. You have others that have you drawn into this that assist you with this. Building, do you ask for donations or receive donations for tools for building and things like this? Yes, we do. We do. We have uh, uh, some partners that they have joined the, the ministry and uh, they have helped us with, uh, with the finances and not only with the finances, but their labor to go and execute the, the, the work itself there in Juarez. I believe the woman who recommended you, Maria, for this award was from somewhere else that came to Juarez to work. You want to mention her? Yeah, yeah. her name is uh, Sandy Horan, and um, she, she was the one that nominated me you know, for CNN Hero. Mm -hmm. And um, she came with a group that came last year and, you know, they, with a missions group to come, you know, they were going to come and help us build, you know, the, the orphanage. And she was here for a, for a week. And in that week, she asked, you know, she asked me a lot of questions and everything, not knowing, you know, that she was going to go back. You know, it wasn't her. And what state is she from? She's from Ohio. From Ohio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, not knowing that she was going to go back and, and, you know, home and, and, and nominate me. But, you know, when she went back home, she had the full story of how we had started and how everything was, you know, was happening. So then she submitted the story to CNN and and then everything started happening <laughs> after that. <laughs> well, how was your trip to Hollywood? Oh, it was awesome. We had an, ex you know, an exciting time. It was really, um, we had a good time. The kids, we, uh, we, you know, it's, it was cold. I understand it was cold those days here in El Paso. And the kids were swimming out <laughs> in an outdoor swimming pool, and they had a really good time. So your daughter and son got to go with you. We saw them on television, too. Yeah. <laughs> talk about a wide smile. Your husband had a smile that filled up the whole TV screen. I <laughs> was so proud of you up there. Yeah. And um, we're proud of you too, Maria, and what you've been doing for El Paso. You've Thank not you. just done this for the Lord. You've done this also for El Paso and Juarez. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, what are your thoughts about this? Well, um, I just, you know, I, I thank God, you know, because he's, uh, he's been the one that has been helped us, you know, come, you know, this far. And, you know, um, and he's provided everything that we have, you know, everything that has been done is because of him. It's not because of us, you know, it's not because we're so good or anything, but it's because God has, um, 
has used us. We're just a, uh, an, an instrument or a vessel, right. you know. And um, and I just thank God because He has been so good and He has provided. And I keep asking Him to give us strength so that we can continue, <laughs> and, you know, uh, continue the journey until you know He says okay. Right. right. <laughs> and if He says this is it, then a mission is never completed. There's always <laughs> yeah. But at some point, you hand it off to others, and you're training others. You you mentioned you're trying to develop a training school. You're trying. You're working as an as an orphanage. Right. As a school and you want to build a training school. Now, what would you be doing in the training school? What are you training them to do? We, are, uh, we, we have the shops available for the community. Uh, it's gonna be computers, and it's gonna be uh, welding, mm -hmm. uh, and it's gonna be also uh, carpentry, and uh, mechanics, general mechanics. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things we wanna do is just to train the children, the youth, uh, the older kids, that so they're not going to school, so they can uh, uh, become better in society mm -hmm and uh, not become a burden for the society. And uh, that way they can uh, be more valuable in their own lives and, and have a better life. Right, help them develop a skill yes. that they yes, can definitely. use. You know, it's definitely. Not just and we have people also that they have joined the, the, uh, the ministry and uh, they're being delegated already in some areas. People that wanna work and wanna do something, be the difference in the community, they're being delegated already in yeah. some areas in the ministry. Well, I've noticed that you're, you're an example for young, some of the young kids at Jesus Chapel School. I've been a volunteer there for years and years. And I noticed that they sometimes are helping bag things for you and load things for you. And they see you as a vision of a Christ-like spirit, that you are helping others. You're not just trying to get from others, but you're actually giving to others. And I, I've seen that in some of the kids, they talk about how excited they get helping you to get stuff to get over there. <laughs> some of them go over there and help you, don't they? Yes. Um, you know, last year they went, um, you know, every year they go, like when we have a toy drive, like this Saturday we're going to be having a toy drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them will also go and they'll, they'll help over there. And like just before coming to the show, we... Um, the kids were they we got several uh, kids maybe about 10 kids and they they loaded up the truck with the toys that we're going to be taking oh, okay. taking across well, exactly. you know? I've seen that before too. <laughs> and yeah. we have your two children here and near the end of this program we're going to have them come on and say a few words but we wanted the big discussion of your project between the two of you and then we want the audience to meet them too because they have been also helping to lift you up oh, and yes. hold you up Yes. And I bet they've carried an awful lot of things in and out of your house. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> every time. Every time. <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, it, the, the family, my family has been the, you know, it, it hasn't just been me, you know, that has been doing this work. You know, my family has been, I have been blessed, you know, that they have all pitched in and done their part. You know, they have... Um, uh, they're, you know, they've kept me going because, right. you know, it, you know, their support has been there all the time right. since, since we started up to now, and and it's still there. So I thank God for my family. <laughs> well, when, when my wife and I were watching your program, the segment that you were on, mm -hmm. and we noticed that how cluttered your house with was all these things, and I looked at my <laughs> wife and I said, "Cena, you're on me all the time about a cluttered house. <laughs> look at Maria's house." <laughs> and she said, "Yes, but look at the cause that it's <laughs> <laughs> today, exactly today, as we were walking out the, the house, I mean, yeah. it's just barely a little uh, trail to go out <laughs> and to come in. I mean, uh, to be able to walk through the, the living room, I mean, we had to go one at a time because we can now not go in at once. You're going to need an 18 wheeler <laughs> to get across that bridge to take all of that stuff in. Or get, you have a pickup? Yes, we have a pickup. Oh, my goodness. It's a, it's a pickup that has a long bed truck. That's what I assumed. And yes. it will seat four people? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Made just for the kind of work that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, you cannot you cannot understand how deeply we feel about this honor mm. for you. And it, you. That really, you share it with everybody, and you give <laughs> credit to everybody. It just happens to be in your name because you are an ordinary person <laughs> that was recognized for something extraordinary. But it came from your vision, and that's mm. a key to it also, that you had this vision, and you talked him out of his paycheck. <laughs> 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 and he's been yeah. repaid many times with joy oh. of the kids that he's oh, yeah. seen them and the, the smiles of his faces and the young people that you're training yeah. for the jobs they have. So we'll give you just a few more minutes, a couple of more minutes, and then we're going to have your children come on. Okay. Last word. Uh, last word. Last word. What would you like to say to the television audience in El Paso, Texas? Um, 
one of the uh, things that um, I would like to say is, you know, I share with everybody that I can, you know, um, the Bible verse, you know, we have a family Bible verse that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen, uh, strengthens us, and it's in, found in Philippians 4.13. And um, that is, you know, to me is something that we cherish, you know, as a family, mm -hmm. you know, because we all, you know, when the kids say, I can't do this, mom, I can't do this. And I said, yes, you can do it because, you know, God is with you and he will strengthen you and you can do it. So um, is there, if there's any time that, you know, God is telling you to do something, you know, and, and you say you can't do it, you know, with God's help, yes, you can do it, okay. you know, with God's Very help, good. you know. That's a good way <laughs> yeah. to, to end. <laughs> Jesus, any last word? Yes, um, people plan things expecting the best of life, but God has better plans for their lives. Oh my, what a way to end this segment of the program. <laughs> okay, we're gonna stop just for a little fraction here, and then we're going to have Jesus Jr. come on, and Elizabeth, correct? <laughs> and come on, and they're lovely children. So stay with us. Billions have been spent on cancer research. Now doctors have a way to help prevent cancer without a prescription. Fruits, vegetables, and other high fiber vegetarian foods can help prevent cancer and improve survival. Call 866-906-WELL. Welcome back. In this segment, we have the future heroes for CNN. We have Elizabeth <laughs> Ruiz and Jesus Jr. Ruiz. Welcome to my show. Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth, tell me where you graduated from high school. I went to Bel Air High School. Bel Air High School, yes. and you're now going to? UTEP. To UTEP. Do you have a major? Yes. Uh, Pre-business. Pre-business. Yes. Okay, well we're glad, and we already know that you've been a big help to your family with this ministry. Uh, Jesus Jr., now you didn't recognize me a while ago when you came in because you've seen me as Santa Claus. You have actually <laughs> performed with me when I was Santa Claus in some of the programs a year ago. Uh, yes. Welcome to the program. Tell me, you're still Thank in you. Jesus Chapel School. I see you there. Yes, I and, am. And uh, you're in what grade now? I'm in seventh grade. Seventh grade. Well, we're glad that you're And my wife, Shanna, was your drama teacher, right? Yes. Okay, now she's expecting to perform real well today. <laughs> 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 Again, uh, a future hero. And we know whatever you do, you're going to do well because you have fine examples here and you've worked with them. Okay, now tell me just a little bit about this ministry. And we have about six minutes or so here. Elizabeth first, tell me about working it. Were you scared when your mother said something about we're going to do all these things over in Juarez? No, actually I was excited. It was something special. I mean, I was, when my mom started the ministry, I was about seven years old mm -hmm. and my brother was a baby. So it was something cool because she's like, oh, we're going to help out other kids your age, older than you and everything. So um, it was something exciting for me. My mom says that when I was small, I would call him. I would call the little kids, come here kids, come here, come oh. here, like without any <laughs> being embarrassed or anything. And now it's like, it. I mean, I'm not embarrassed. You were like their big them, sister. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was something very special to me. Oh, well, great. So you're, you're to be thanked for your part of this ministry. Jesus Jr., you were just a baby when all this started and you saw it developing and you saw the house getting cluttered and had to make your way through all those toys. Yes. Didn't you want to keep all the toys there for yourself? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but then you went over and you gave these toys to the others over in Juarez that had nothing. And you saw when the joy. Tell us about this. How did you feel about what you were doing? When I saw the poverty in Juarez, it's like a whole different world. Mm -hmm. Because they, like, they only get one cr Christmas gift. And it's good to help them. And when you see their faces, it just lights up your life. Right. Gives you a hope. <laughs> well, did you just today or put together toys, help get ready things ready to go over there now? Yes. And what did you see that you're taking over there? What kind of things are you taking? Um, soccer balls, basketballs, baby dolls, and Barbie dolls, mm -hmm. and cars. Trucks. Oh, trucks. my goodness. Trucks. They really <laughs> go for the trucks. Yes. yes. What about you? What did you see that you're, you're taking over there? And you especially want to see their faces when you hand those out. Well, I saw a lot of Barbies. A lot of gr little girls don't have Barbies, like little dolls. I mean, they'll make use with what they have, like little dishes or their mom's dishes, but they, a lot of them um, would love to have a Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of Barbie dolls and stuffed animals. Kids love stuffed oh, animals. Okay, let's go to the hero trip just briefly here. 
How did you feel about going to Hollywood and seeing those movie stars and hearing them? <laughs> Elizabeth, you first. It was exciting. It was awesome. It's, it was a one-time, one, once-in-a-lifetime experience. Mm -hmm. So it was very special. It'll be something I'll treasure in my heart. Oh, your memory's going to be there. Yes. So. What about you, Jesu? It was cool to meet all the stars and everything, get to know them, and get to just um, share the vision with them. Were you touched by the other heroes that you heard their stories and you saw the video? Yes. And it brought memories of what you were doing and you kind <laughs> of associated with what they're doing, right? Yes. What about you? It was awesome to see that other people are doing something to impact somebody else's life around the world. Oh. I mean, we're not the only ones. I mean, there's people scattered around the world. If we all work together, I mean, we can, as my mom said, we can make a difference, a bit of a difference. And you touched a key part there, around the world. Mm -hmm. It's not just one place. There's yes. need everywhere in the world yes. today, and we know that. And, and, and as Maria, once again, she says, if each one of us will do our little part, then we can achieve big things. To me, that's yes. the lesson that I take from this. And so once again, we, we're, we're happy that you're here today. Uh, let's see, we have, uh, I'm being told, we have two minutes. Goodness, it seems like we have so much to talk about. <laughs> Maria, since you're the one that received this award, for this segment too, we're going to let you close it out again. Tell me how you feel about your kids working with you in this way. Um, I feel um, happy and um, it makes my heart, you know, keep going, you know, because when my family, since I have my family that's supporting me, that's you know, supporting me all the way through, not just, you know, when they want to, but all the time. And, um, you know, that is what, for me, you know, it's, you know, I thank God that I have a family, that he gave me a family that is um, dedicated and um, that is willing, that has a willing heart to help, you know, because, you know, we, we all, we all, um, you know, I don't do it by myself. You know, we all, you know, put in a pitch in and put right, in our parts. Right, uh -huh. right. But when they, they have done it since they're, they, you know, they've been small, since the kids have been small. And, um, you know, when they have um, just put in so much of their time, um, you know, I know that, you know, yeah, the difficult times have come by and everything, but, you know, they have been there um, in the good times and they have been there in the bad you times. Bet. And by the way, we should offer a special thanks for the staff at Jesus Chapel School and at Restoration Fellowship where the school meets. And by the way, I've just decided that I'm going to do a series over the coming months uh, called Community Heroes of El Paso, Texas. So if those of you watching would like to write a letter to us recommending someone that you know that is impacting other people in the neighborhood in the city of El Paso, write to us at the address that we're going to show at the bottom of the screen. And the staff and I will go through these and we will pick out some of these names and invite them to be on our show. Not just for individual heroic deeds that are done on a day-to-day -day basis, but people that make a long-term lifetime difference in the life of El Paso. Thank you for watching Perspectives El Paso. I'm Leon Blevins.